finalists there will have qualified through various finals during the season in different parts of the world. The British final was held on Thursday last, and the fact that established stars like Malcolm Simmons, Gordon Kennett, and the reigning British champion Steve Bastable didn't make the 16 for Coventry shows how the young Lions are roaring ahead. Well, the British final was decided over 20 heats, and after heat number eight, each of the 16 riders had completed two of their allotted five rides, and only Andy Graham was still undefeated. He was on six points, having set a new track record with the first of his rides. His brother Alan was one point behind, along with another pair of brothers, Phil and Peter Collins. Kenny Carter was also on five points, while Michael Lee, the 1980 world champion, and Chris Morton shared four points. Simon Wigg and Paul Woods had three points. The third Collins brother, Les, was on two, along with Malcolm Holloway and Dave Jessup. Mike Ferreira and Kevin Jolly had one point, while John Davis and John Louis had failed to score. So, with the British title and eight qualifying places in the overseas final at stake, we now join the action for Heat 9 at the Coventry Stadium are Gary Newborn and Dave Lanning. There is a lineup. Mike Ferreira on the inside, then Morton, Paul Woods with three, Moff Holloway on the outside. Heat number nine. And it is from the inside, Mike Ferreira who gets away. Morton is second. In third place, it's Woods, and at the back, it is Holloway. So this, again, is something of a surprise because Ferreira, the Zimbabwean, made the start and he has got Chris Morton really ducking and diving on his back wheel and looking for his point of attack. It's going to come around the outside. And Ferreira holds him back, but for how long? Looking very frisky. Chris Morton again attacking the outside and this time has he got the drop? Yes, he has. So Morton favouring... Uh, the dirt favouring the outside line makes it pay, as we have been so often. And it's interesting that these two in front, Morton Freira, had a terrifying fight-up in the semi-final at Hackney, which almost put pay to Morton's chances. It is uh, encouraging to see him, obviously, over that knock. Here's a fine picture of the pair of them hurtling in to the bottom corner here at Brandon. Another fine win for Morton, second place for Freira, third was Woods. Last at the back was Malcolm Holloway. So Chris Morton, number 16, last under the hat, but uh, first past the post there in Heat 9. Chris Morton, were you aware that uh, Mike Ferreira and yourself were involved? It was Mike involved in that terrible crash in the semi-final. I didn't realise it was Mike, you know, I mean, I don't hold any grudges for that. It was just an accident, you know, that happened due to probably tight racing, you know, there's no, there's no grudges held there. No, but you weren't aware it was him, in I, fact? I wasn't, no, I mean, I, I knew he was in the race, but, um, I was just going for winning it. You know. Right, well, let's show you the overtake, your second one. Yeah, um, I mean, I'd had a bad ride in my last one, so I was looking for um, a few more points here. And um, it took a bit of weighing up, you know, because he was riding it so well that he was coming in tight and pinching the dirt on the outside going out, you know, so I, was, I had to weigh him up for a few laps. But um, it says I only just got round him, you know, it was just a bit of a squeeze to get past him. Well, this Brandon track isn't holding many first for you, as far as overtaking is concerned tonight. No, it's not. It's, um, they prepared it well, you know, it's, it seems to be suiting the passing. A lot of people complain that you can't pass around the place, but if you try hard enough, you can. Well, almost a capacity crowd here at this uh, superbly appointed Brandon Stadium, one of the cornerstones of British Speedway since 1948, and really magnificently administrated by Charles Ockletree and his team. The track's in perfect condition, we've seen that. And considering the thunderstorms which have raged and roared and flashed about the Midlands today, that's a real tribute to them. Well, again, uh, we wonder if it's going to be a case of O oh, Brother here because we've got Phil Collins and Peter Collins on the inside in red and blue, respectively. And they both have five points. So they both are very much in touch with this British title. We've got Simon Wigg in white who has three points and uh, who has looked by no means out of his depth in this kind of company, despite the fact he is what might be termed a junior. And Michael Lee on the outside with a win and a third. Michael, of course, so uh, terribly unpredictable. Does blow hot and cold. Phil Collins on his 22nd birthday is, what, uh, six years younger than Peter. There are five of the <laughs> Collins brothers. There's uh, Peter the eldest, of course. Les is in this meeting. We have got Phil looking good, and we have got uh, young Neil Collins at uh, Leicester, just across the Midlands here, really making uh, quite a success of his opening season in British League racing. There's one more to come, young uh, Stephen up there, who turned 16 this summer. So five brothers from uh, Lim in Cheshire. We've got two of them in this race. 
Phil Collins on the inside, Peter Collins bid two, Simon Wig bid three, Michael Lee on the outside. Here we go, heat ten. And it's a narrow squeeze up to the first corner. But it is Peter Collins who shows Lee, gets around the outside of Phil Collins, Wigs at the back. That really was a torrid first corner. And what a cracking start from Peter Collins. And the old maestro looks to be very much back on form, and his brother Phil is by no means finished as he uh, boldly moves up to tackle Michael Lee for second place. And that's a fine piece of cornering for Phil Collins. Just look at this for Speedway. Who said you cannot pass it, Coventry? We've seen it around the outside now, we've seen it on the inside from Phil Collins. And the Collins boys are having a British final to remember. This is Peter. There's Phil in second place. There's Peter, number five. And, uh, well, almost a carbon copy. Down the back straight, this is the last lap. Peter's going to win it. Phil is second. Michael Lee is third. And it really is a heartening sight to see Peter Collins back to something like his old world uh, champion best. And brother Phil looking as though he might at last follow in his tyre prints. Well, it isn't often you see uh, Peter Collins get away, but he's in grid two here. His front wheel's just off the ground, and he gets up to the first corner, almost elbowing younger brother Phil out of the way. Now, here comes Michael Lee around the outside. This is the first lap, and Michael Lee has just got enough motor to drive down the outside of Phil Collins into the bottom corner. Here's Peter in front, but now let's just watch for Phil Collins, because although he's been squeezed out on that first lap, he's by no means finished. He comes roaring back on the inside of Lee, and as they move into the second lap, he really gets his head down, gets determined. There he is, he's a long way back. Lee drifts out almost into Peter Collins' slipstream here, and uh, Phil Collins sees his moment, comes diving through, still not quite enough but again, he will try the inside run here. Lee must be aware that he's there. And again, Lee just about overcooks the corner, and there Phil Collins has ridden really a beautiful curb line. Goes through on the inside. Two more points to him. The qualification places are beginning to sort themselves out, and it, again, becoming quite a scramble for the last places. We're moving into heat 11, and uh, clearly we have two riders looking for qualification, and two whose chances... Uh, must be fast slipping away. John Louis on the inside. What a disappointing night for the old Tiger. No score so far. Alan Graham, uh, by comparison, has had a marvellous night. It's a win and a second place. He's in grid two here in blue. Kevin Jolly from Ipswich. Well, an honest enough practitioner. Maybe a little bit out of his depth here at British final level. And Kenny Carter. Well, the wee tyke uh, was everybody's choice as potential champion. He has five points as well. Here we go, heat 11. And it got awfully tight around the outside, and Carter squeezed over there. And that really was just a little bit naughty. It'll be interesting seeing that one again. But in front, it is Louis, and Carter goes across the curb and moves his teammate over. And, well, coming through to is Alan Graham into second place, so it's Carter and Graham. <laughs> that was a first lap when just about everything hit us. But the kitchen think Carter's in front, Graham is second, and third place it is Louis. The back it's Jolly. And Carter obviously means business. He zoomed across at the start, he shot up the inside. And Jolly has moved past uh, Louis into third place as well. So Tiger Louis has gone from first to last. And Carter, whose uh, tactics on that first lap may well bear scrutiny, is in front and looking again well set for three more points. He wins it. Carter, three more. Alan Graham, two. He'll be happy with that. In third place, it was Jolly. But oh dear. Well, that first lap was well worth another look. Well, just watch Kenny Carter here on this first lap. Right from the start, he's leaning across on Kevin Jolly, gives him a nudge, but all the action there in the first corner is Carter comes across, Graham's in the sandwich, Louis on the inside, Graham gets squeezed out there with all the elbows flying, but Louis is down in the front here. Now, just watch for Carter because he really boldly moves under his teammate. Now, his front wheel's over the white line. They did both of his wheels go over the line. It didn't look it. 
but it certainly moved John Louis over and left a hole for Alan Graham to come through. <laughs> that really was spectacular action from the Yorkshireman. Kenny, one or two anxious moments for you in that heat at the start. Yeah, I, I made a bad start. Uh, my clutch was dragging me into the tips, and I thought, you know, I'd made a sort of bad start. So well, I we'll show it to you now. Yeah. Oh, you thought one? Yeah, my, my bike was pulling me into the start, and I had to hold it back. And when the front wheel lifted, I come into the corner, and I just sort of, you know, I couldn't get there. And when I come on the inside of John coming out, because I was not getting any drive coming around the corner, and then I saw John, so I decided to come back on the inside. But as I turned on the inside, so did John. And my front wheel hit the curb, but my back wheel, you know, I just saw was on the track. And uh, just went from there then. So there's no problems about that at all, was it? Well, I want to have, you know, I think I had the wrong gear on and my bike was spinning, but hopefully we can tune it up, you know. It's three points, only one drop so far tonight. Yep. Heat 12, John Davis on the inside has had a desperately unhappy evening. Les Collins in grid two could do with some points too. He's seen both his brothers really uh, gathering the points in every race and he really will have to move some now to qualify. And the same might be said for Dave Jessup, the England captain and uh, a world-class performer without any doubt. He's only got two. Whereas on the outside we have the uh, apple cart merchant. He really has upset the form book, Andy Graham. Although Midlanders will say it's no surprise to them. He really has been in superb form unbeaten he is the leader after two races maybe looking to three points and a win here to maintain that uh, top spot on the leaderboard there is Andy Graham in his first British final so Davis on the inside then Les Collins grid three Jessup on the outside Andy Graham here we go he 12 This time, it is Graham who gets away. That was a very ragged start. Davis is second. Les Collins coming around the outside, looking for second place. He just about gets the drop on Davis going into the bottom corner. And Jessup's at the back. And there's another surprise. Graham didn't look to have made the start, but he certainly made up an awful lot of ground up to the first turn. And he's well clear now and kicking on. Second place, Les Collins. Third is Davis. is certainly making a little bit of ground on Graham but this slender young man from Birmingham doesn't make any mistakes and goes very very quickly there's the battle up front we look back and there just going out of our picture till John Davis in third place this is the leaders so it's going to be Andy Graham still unbeaten second place Les Collins third Davis and Dave Jessup and there's a surprise no points for DJ the England captain could this possibly be the end of the World Championship road for him and the start of a World Championship fairy tale for this man, Andy Graham? Three rides down, just two to go in this Sunday Mirror British final of the World Championship. And there are the riders looking for qualification places at White City in the overseas final. Andy Graham, surprise leader, still unbeaten after three races. He has nine points, but he still has to meet Kenny Carter, who's breathing right down his neck in second place, along with Peter Collins. Brother Phil Collins is in there too on seven points, along with Andy's brother Alan Graham on seven and Chris Morton. Michael Lee's back on five. Then we have Les Collins and Paul Woods battling for the final qualification place. Remember, only eight go forward. And noticeable, most noticeable by his absence from that leaderboard is Dave Jessup with only two points. Well, what a start for you two Graham brothers. Andy, the clear leader, and you fourth place equal, Alan. What about your brother, first of all? What a dramatic start for him after three rides. I think he's doing very well, Gary. Um, the way he's going, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't win it here today. Well, Andy? Yeah, well, Gary, I'm pleased myself. I came here just with the attitude to qualify. Um, I am in with a chance of winning it, and let's hope I can pull it off, yeah. Alan, it's all going right for this young lad this season, isn't it? Yeah, he's having a terrific season. He had a winter down in Australia. That set things going very well. Came back and just carried on where he left off, and he's going from strength to strength. And there's the man the Graham brothers fear, Kenny Carter, coming out here in Heat 13. He has dropped a point to the flying Chris Morton, but still very much in touching distance of this British title. The second last year has sworn to go one better here at Brandon in this 1982 final. Kenny Carter will be in grid three, which hasn't been one of the quickest grids away from the start 
although he showed himself to be ruthless and resourceful coming from the back. Carter to watch for in grid three. But we just look across to the inside grid because here is the man that the eyes of uh, Coventry and indeed uh, British Speedway are on at the moment, Andy Graham. His first British final, unbeaten with uh, three wins under his belt. And in the race now, which may well sort out the eventual destination of the 1982 British Championship. And it's getting a little nervy there. Graham has turned back uh, probably to keep them uh, all just on tender hooks a little. Looking across the other two starters here, we have uh, Phil Collins. Well, of course, Phil's had a good night. He has a total of seven points. And Paul Woods on the outside in yellow and black. He's by no means uh, out of the fight for qualification places. So he, 13, may well be decisive. There is Woods. Really is hot competition for him here. On the inside, Graham unbeaten on nine points. Next to him, Phil Collins on his birthday going like a bomb. Grid three has Kenny Carter, who really must beat uh, Andy Graham here if he wishes to realistically hold hope out hopes of the British Championship, the one he values so dearly. And on the outside, Paul Woods, 8.30, the one that can sort it all out. And away they go. And it is Carter and it is Graham who move out. And Graham was the ruthless one. And this is super speedway because Carter's fighting back. That really was a no holds barred first corner. And it's Graham in front. Carter is second. Phil Collins is third. So they all bunch up. He's only a little guy, wants to weigh about eight stone, but he certainly moved Kenny Carter over there. And British Speedway really has found a new star. Andy Graham going away from Carter. And uh, Carter's got his uh, work cut out to hold back Phil Collins' challenge. And Collins is going down the inside. It's happening up front, it's happening in second place. We're having some very really splendid Speedway here at Coventry. This is the last lap, and again, Carter and Collins are ducking and diving and weaving and bobbing, and look how tight it is there. And Andy Graham is in concern, he's going to win P13, and that may well be the one that takes the British title to the younger Graham brother and to Birmingham. And the crowd are rising to him because uh, he really made that race his at the first corner, and it was as exciting and as tough a first corner as you're likely to see. Kenny, did you have trouble with your bike in that race? Yes, uh, I went to the start and me, me, it kept dragging me to the start, did the clutch, and I thought something was wrong, but I couldn't go back. I, I, made, I thought I made a decent start, and I knew Andy was on the inside, so I tried to go around him, and as I locked in, it just nearly pitched me over the handlebars, and I just hung on and kept going, and just, you know, I thought my bike actually was seizing up, because it kept vibrating, and I just settled for a second, then Phil come past, and I thought, you know, I thought my bike was going to go any time, and luckily I held on to a second, but my frame snapped in half both sides. Well, you didn't know that, Andy. Let's take you through the start, because uh, it was a remarkable start for you. Yeah, um, see, I'm... Kenny's off guide three there, and I'm off guide see, one. And we both sort of come to the corner together. Phil just gets chopped out there, and see, so we touch there, and then, see, I've got the drive on the inside, and Kenny's, uh, whatever happened to his frame, obviously put him in a bit of trouble. but. You know, I just got the drive there and just come out on top in front of Kenny. OK, well, Kenny, very quickly, a lot of people tip you to win this title, but the lad here has done well, even though you had trouble with your bike. Yeah, he's, you know, he's going well, but he hasn't won it yet, you know. As we near the climax of this uh, 1982 British final, the best of British, and we've had, uh, really, some resourceful racing and some enterprising entertainment. And we wonder if we're going to have uh, just... A tinge of drama and sadness now because Jessup desperate for points here in heat 15 while as Morton and Collins are also in with the hunt. And it is Jessup who breaks. Jessup is clear. Second place is Morton. Third coming around the outside is Peter Collins and the three England men, teammates on track in world team events. There'll be no love lost now though as the battle is thoroughly joined. Jessup battling for his very life, for his very existence in this year's World Championship. Can he possibly squeeze through after the disasters that have befallen him in his earlier rides? He's got Chris Morton right on his tail, Peter Collins. It must be said, he's not really gaining ground. Way at the back, it's jolly. 
And Jessup lives again, breathes again. He's in front. Morton is not really making inroads on him to move into the last lap. Uh, here comes Morton trying to find again that extra grip and drive and power around the outside. I think he's going to catch Jessup. And Jessup, well, he'll be a Houdini if he can pull this one off. He wins. 8.15, those three points absolutely worth their weight in gold to him. Second was Chris Morton, third was Peter Collins. And we can but speculate if Dave Jessup can still squeeze in to the overseas final, it really would be one of the master escapes in speedway history if he manages it. 8.16, Les Collins will be in the white helmet colour here. After collecting a duck first time out, he's had two consistent second places, but uh, can't afford to slip to drop any more points here. This is heat 16 on the inside, Alan Graham, one of the oh-so-competitive uh, Graham brothers. His younger brother Andy's in front, Alan will be looking to consolidate a qualification place here in 16. Mike Ferreira in grid two, Les Collins looking for points to grab one of those eight places at White City in grid three. On the outside, Simon Wigg, by no means disgraced in this uh, his first big-time international speedway ind individual meeting. And an interesting point here is that uh, Mike Ferreira and Simon Wigg were first and second in last year's National League Championship final at uh, Wimbledon, which shows the National League really is doing its job producing some star riders of great potential. Here we go, heat 16. On the inside, Alan Graham, Ferreira blue, Les Collins white, Simon Wigg yellow and black. And again, it is Alan Graham who shows. Les Collins is second, coming around the outside hard. It is going to be Wigg for third place challenging Ferreira. And here comes Collins after Alan Graham. Alan Graham leads it. It's uh, Les Collins riding with all the competitive urge that this clan from Cheshire seem to be imbued with. Will not uh, stop battling. Graham in front, uh, Les Collins trying to uh, really find something extra special. Now he's switched inside as Collins moved to counter him, rather as uh, Graham moved to counter him. to the last lap. Can uh, Les Collins possibly find that uh, little bit of extra help? Alan Graham has ridden an immaculate line, has not allowed him an inch of space, and is going to collect three points for his efforts. Three more for him, he must surely go forward now to White City. Les Collins collects two more precious points. In third place, it was Mike Ferreira. Here is Alan Graham, a total of 10 points, ensures that he will be in the overseas final, his first overseas final, and he's still in with a shout of a place on the rostrum here in the British final. They all have one ride left. There are the leaders, Andy Graham clearly in front on 12 points, two clear of the second place riders, Kenny Carter and his elder brother, Alan Graham. Peter Collins and Chris Morton are on nine points, Phil Collins on eight, Michael Lee on seven, and Les Collins on six. Now, those are the eight qualification places, but it all depends what happens in this last outing, because look who's breathing right down their neck now. Dave Jessup on five points, and he's still got an awful lot to race for. Heat number 17, and it could complete a masterpiece of escapology for this rider, Dave Jessup. He looked completely out of contention after only two points from his first three rides, won his last race, and a win here might still steal him one of those valuable eight qualification places in the overseas final. And Jessup, the rider looking for one of the greatest comebacks in Speedway history, in honesty, has not got the hottest of opposition here in Heat 17, with no disrespect to the three of them, but all three are out of contention. Paul Woods on the inside, John Louis in grid two, Simon Wig grid three. Jessup could finish on eight points, and that would still put him in with a shout. And would still really put the cat among the pigeons for the last qualification place. It would put pressure on Michael Lee at the moment that has seven points. And a very tough last ride. So Jessup, who found his starting touch in his fourth ride when he beat uh, Peter Collins and Chris Morton, no mean duo. We'll be looking for another flying start. The outside grid hasn't been a quick one. Let's see what DJ can make of it here in this Heat 17. So important to his World Championship chances in 1982. 
and he has just squeezed ahead into the first corner. Second is Paul Woods. We've lost uh, John Louis there in engine trouble. And this is Jessup uh, really going for his very existence in the World Championship. He's in no danger, but such is his record of mechanical breakdowns that all of us uh, who have admired his skill and his flair and his sportsmanship over the years now just keep our fingers crossed that the bike keeps going because uh, David has such an appalling record of mechanical letdowns and it really would be uh, a great tragedy if his bike should go now. What a doctor cut for uh, his courage. All seem lost after three races. He might still squeeze in. And as we mentioned, that will rate as one of the great comebacks, great pieces of escapology in speedway history. Three more points to Jessup. He finishes on eight points. Now he must sweat. Second place was Woods. Third was Wig. And there's Jessup. Two late wins. He's hanging on by his fingertips. And we can but wait to see if his effort has been worthwhile or just a little too late. And we come into the crucial heat number 18, the meeting of the two Graham brothers with Andy. And he'll be in the white helmet. There he is preparing, needing to win this one to take the British crown and the 500 time first prize. Biggest race of his young career, no question about that. He gets pushed off into the arena. And he's got his brother, big brother Alan, who's made sure on a qualification place. But it is uh, a pleasant thought and indeed a heartening one that we have a Birmingham rider because Birmingham Speedway, once uh, such a stronghold in the old days of uh, Graham Warren, Alan Hunt, Doug Davis, so many stars have been through a lean patch recently although no, through no fault of their promoters. And it must be said that uh, they do seem to have a real star here, and that will really get the uh, Brummagen hordes on the march. Here is Alan Graham from just across the Midlands at Cradley Heath. And we have got Michael Lee in here as well, and Michael Lee will need points. There's Graham, Alan. Well, there is the lineup, and this really is a vitally important race. Alan Graham, sure of qualification, could scrape into the first three. Michael Lee must get points because he knows Dave Jessums has finished on eight points, so Lee's qualification place in grave danger unless he scores here. And Graham needing points, needing a win to ensure the championship. In fact, he only needs second place to make sure of this British crown. And on the outside, Chris Morton on nine points. And he too could just scrape into the first three with a win here. So we have got uh, an L biter at both ends of the scale. Andy Graham looking to this one to win his first major individual crime and doing it too at his first attempt. And that really is a notable effort. And that's another Graham brother. That's John, the third member with uh, Reading in the British League, formerly with Oxford. Looking well, a little bit uh, pensive, I'm sure that uh, his favours are split down the middle here. Really is tense, I think. You can put your hand out into this uh, rather sultry night air here in the Midlands and take the atmosphere by great handfuls. It really is getting a bit electric. On the inside, Alan Graham. Next to him, Michael Lee, desperate for points. He cannot afford a last place here, Michael Lee. With three, Andy Graham needing a second place to win the British Championship at his first attempt. And on the outside, perhaps the most spectacular spoiler of them all, Chris Morton from Bellevue, who loves to roar around the outside. Heat number 18, the one that surely will decide the destination of the 1982 British title. And it's uh, Alan Graham has given Michael Lee a fearful wallop into the first corner. And Lee has gone from second to last. And that again was a muscle flexing first corner. It is Alan Graham in front. In second place now, it is Andy Graham. Although in third place, Chris Morton is really getting in among them. And Michael Lee's at the back, and that could be disastrous for him. Oh, again, we're having uh, the most splendid speedway. 
So it's Alan Graham in front, brother Andy in second place, Morton still buzzing around the boards, and Lee looks as though he might well be out of the World Championship. The second place will be enough for Andy Graham. Certainly not getting any favours from big brother Alan. And I don't suppose he'll ask for any. And after what? About half a lap, he won't need any. Because it is a benefit night for the Grahams. Alan wins it, but Andy Graham it is, who is the new British champion in third place. It was Morton. And I'll bet the first man to congratulate him will be big brother Alan. There it is. And Brandon Stadium erupts. Alan Graham, his first defeat of the night, he won't be worried about that. A second place is enough to give him the £500 Sunday Mirror cheque and the title. And his class and courage have been stitched through this British final like a gold seam. They'll be waiting for him at the pit gate, there's no doubt about that. Well, he's an unassuming young man. Just a shy smile. And there is a very handy Andy Graham, the new British Speedway champion, and a really very worthy one. Well, Andy Graham, you are the British champion. Yeah, I can't believe it, Gary. I came here to uh, qualify, and, um, well, Stevie Boo was in this position last year, and. I can understand what it was like. It must have been fantastic for him. Because he came here just to qualify and he did the same as what I did. I'm, I just can't believe it. How much do you have to thank Brother Alan there at the start just to make sure that last heat? Oh, um, Alan and I had a talk before the race and uh, we decided we both was going to go for the race. You know, we had nothing planned. Because if uh, Alan did, like, Alan's in with a chance, like, still for second, I think, isn't he? Yes. So I was just delighted. Really. Well, what next? Uh, call it for through to the next, from the next one. <laughs> well, you're the British champion. Congratulations, Andy Graham. You've had a terrific night here at Coventry. Thank you very much, Gary. Well played. Yes, a triumphant night for the Graham boys. Andy winning the British title with 14 points. Alan beaten into second place by a single point. Kenny Carter was third. Then came Phil Collins and his brother, the former world champion, Peter. Chris Morton was followed by the other Collins brother, Les, and Dave Jessup, England's captain, just made the eighth qualifying place for the overseas final with eight points. But the night belonged to Birmingham's 24-year-old star, Andy Graham. And there is the main British Championship trophy. That's been in some famous hands over the years, coming from the chairman of the Speedway Control Board, Jerry Fluitt. Well... He's shy, he's unassuming, he really isn't the overall image of a daredevil speedster. Andy Graham, for my word, he's a super champion. Success there, but continuing disappointment, as you saw for Michael Lee, the 1980 world champion, he failed to make it by...